In this lesson, you will use percents and proportions to find a part of a base or to find the base itself. Our goal is to use proportions to find a base when finding percentages of quantities. How do you find part of the base or find a base when calculating percentages? Well, when finding the base, you're asked to find the base in a percentage problem. You can solve for the B in the proportion. In this case, A over B equals a percent of 100, or P over 100 for our variable. In many cases, you may want to use the cross products property. You can write all percentage problems using the form A is P percentage of B. And that can help you write the correct proportion with the unknown variable, which is either A, B, or P in a percent problem. So when you know A is P, you of course know to set up your A across from P. And B is your hundreds, or percent of a hundred. So how do we do that? Well, we can do it in a variety of ways. In this problem, we're finding part of a base. Banquet. At a banquet, 15% of those attending ordered a vegetarian meal. If 100 people attended the banquet, how many ordered vegetarian? So the question to ask yourself is what do you substitute for A, B, and P? Well, to find the number of people who ordered a vegetarian meal, we're going to use a proportion. So I'm going to first write out the proportion A over B equals P over 100. Now I'm going to look at do I know the percent? Yes, it's 15. So I know what my P is. So I have my 15 over 100. Now I know that 120 people attended and I want to know how many ordered vegetarian. So the people attended, what you have to ask yourself, is that part or is it the total? Now if 100 people, or sorry, if 120 people attended total, that means I'm looking for the part. So I have 120 people is my B, because it lines up with my total percent of 100. So I hope that makes sense to you. Again, total to total. Those have to be across from each other when setting up a proportion. And I want to know my part of the total. So in this case, I'm looking for my A. If you're struggling with this, go back to previous tutorials and revisit how to set up ratios and proportion problems. So now I can use the cross products property or I can use a different method. In this case, I have 15 over 100. If you want to reduce that first, it can make solving the problem sometimes easier. If I didn't reduce it and I used cross products, across and down, across and down, I would get 100 times A equals 1800. So in this case, it's pretty easy to solve it this way because dividing 18 by 100 is not very challenging. So if you reduce it, for some of you, it's just an extra step. So always look at what it would be doing cross products before you start reducing things or cross canceling anything. So 100 times what number is 1800? Well, if I divide, I would get 18 people. So 18 people ordered a vegetarian meal at this banquet. So in this case, we found part of a base. And it's a good idea to write that in your notes. Now let's look at when we have to find a base. 42 is 30% of what number? Anytime you have 42 is, or a number is the percent, remember that is means equals. So if I just wrote this out, 42 equals 30%, and we remember of means to multiply, 
times what number I can use n. Then you can kind of see, well, I have 42 equals the percent. 42 does not equal the n. So in this case, when I rewrite my proportion, a over b equals 30 for my p percent of 100. I know that if 42 lines up with 30 here, it's going to need to line up with 30 on my proportion. So in this case, I'm solving for the base. So 42 is my numerator because I need, again, 42 equals 30. And again, I know my other base is 100, and I don't know my base right now, so I'm going to use b for my variable. Technically, you can use any letter, but when you keep writing it in this form, it really helps you keep track. So I have cross products, across and down, across and down. Now again, you can reduce 30 over 100 to 3 tenths if you want to. But let's see what happens if we just multiply across. So I have 42 times 100, which is 4200, equals 30 times B. There's a reason I showed it to you as well this way. It's because, look at the first scenario and this scenario. Notice I still have 42 equals 30 times something. So I know I, when I can double check here, that I've set it up correctly. Well, 30 times what number is 4,200? Well, 42 divided by 3 is 14. And then I have the zeros that can cancel out, showing you another trick again. And then I have an extra zero. Now again, you could just use the old-fashioned division 4,200 divided by 30, but I'm trying to show you some tricks to shorten some of your math problems. So, 140 is that total number. 42 is 30% of 140. And you can check, well, 30% is 3 tenths, is 42 divided by 40, sorry, divided by 140, 3 tenths, and it is. The fraction 42 over 140 can reduce to 3 tenths. Or if you just divided it on a calculator to check, you would get the decimal, which is 3 tenths as well. So I hope seeing those two different kinds of examples helps you when setting up proportions. Now it's your turn. So you have two problems where you're going to need to find part of a base and two problems when you need to find the base. Remember base, bottom, base, bottom, that's your A over B. Again, don't forget to write down your proportion in A over B form equals a percent of 100. Rewriting it each time will really imprint that into your mind. So you have what number is 76% of 25? What number is 37% of 200? 14 is 56% of what number? 24 is 96% of what number? Again, really analyze the wording on each of these. Look at what comes first and what do you notice certain keywords mean in these problems. Then ask yourself, what proportion could you write to solve each problem? Go ahead and take a minute to pause the tutorial and do these on your own. So in this lesson, you set up percent problems and used proportions to solve. You found part of a base as well as found a base in many of the cross products expressions. Remember, you can always write percentage problems using the form A is P percent of B. This form will always help you write the correct proportion. Have you noticed that cross products pops up a lot in mathematics? That's because this simple expression can help you to conquer all kinds of different concepts. Keep in mind not all concepts but it can definitely help you with a variety of mathematical practices. So great job again today.